Howdy, my name is Billy Hoya. I'm one of the librarians here at Lensor North Terrace Library. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Modern Language Association or MLA style guide. So what are we covering today? We're gonna to talk a little bit about what a style guide is. We're gonna talk about MLA document formatting. So that's things like margins, what size fonts you need to use, stuff like that. We're going to talk about in-text citations. So that's where you actually write the quote or the fact in your paper. And then we're going to talk about constructing a works cited page. So that's where you put, you know, the author and the title and where it all came from. So what is a style guide? A style guide is sometimes called a style manual or a manual of style. A style guide creates a standard for communication. So it may say you need to use a specific type of language. It may give you certain formatting guidelines. So for example, here on the left, you can see um, this is from MLA where we have a specific heading, uh, one inch margins and double space lines. It may cover things like uh, using certain fonts for different types of headers or different parts of text. If you work at a large company, your style guide may include how to use the company's logo. So for example, we have uh, a piece here from the University of Houston downtown style guide. And you can see here, it actually shows you how to use the mascot, uh, Educator, and how to properly use uh, the UHD logo. A style guide can also set up standards for the type of language used describe certain things. Uh, if you look on the left here, this is a sample from the Associated Press AP style guide. And you can see here, uh, they have a little question, drunk, driver, uh, drunk driving was blamed for just over one third of crashes or accidents uh, and speeding for just under uh, uh, another third. Um, and you can see down here, the correct answer is crashes and they give you a little explanation about why um, when you're writing for AP, uh, you use crashes instead of accidents. Um, over here on the right, you can see this is actually a clip from the Lone Star College um, style guide. And you can see here, you know, I can't just say um, uh, Lone Star North Harris or something when I'm writing an official document. There's actually a, a particular way that I'm supposed to say our college, our campus's name, LSC-North Harris, right? And so they talk a little bit about that there. And then you can also see down here uh, where they give you a few examples. Style guides aren't just for the person writing the text. They're also for the person reading the text. Um, if you've ever read the front of a uh, one of those, uh, you know, whatever for dummies or idiot's guide to whatever, um, usually at the front of the book, you'll see something like this. And this just tells you, this is a very basic style guide, and it tells you, hey, when you see this icon, this means a certain thing. Um, you see this type of simple style guide sometimes at the beginning of instruction manuals. So if any of you are uh, pursuing a career in uh, one of the trades there, uh, when you have to look at that instruction manual, you know they may give you a little list of icons here and say, when you see this icon, um, this is a caution, you know, the next thing may cause bodily harm or something like that. So there are many different style guides out there. Um, again, if you work at a big company uh, like Shell or NASA or UHD, you're probably gonna see a company style guide. Lone Star College, you can check out our, uh, our public relations guide down there. Uh, we have the link right there. Uh, we actually have three They kind of cover different things. They recently sort of combined those all into to one style guide, um, but you can check the, our, our campus's style guide out there. Um, if you plan on going into uh, reporting, if any of you are uh, going into a career as a news reporter, you may find yourself using AP, the Associated Press uh, style guide. Um, in your uh, career, if any of y'all are going into uh, some of the uh, social sciences, psychology, uh, things like um, uh, medicine, 
You may find yourself using uh, the American uh, Psychological Association or APA style guide, um, and even some of our humanities professors here use that. But today, we're gonna be talking mostly about uh, the Modern Language Association or MLA style guide. So let's start by talking about MLA document formatting. MLA requires a one inch margin. For the most part, uh, Word by default will have one inch margins. If you're not using Microsoft Word, uh, if you're using a different uh, word processor, you may wanna check those margins and just make sure they're one inch. Um, also, MLA doesn't, doesn't require a specific font, uh, but it does recommend that you use a font that is legible like Times New Roman that it be at a size that is legible. So 12 point font, some, some fonts, they look good at 10 points. Some fonts, they look good at 12. Use the font where it would be the most legible. And also it requires that your lines are double spaced. Now, one thing to watch out uh, when you are picking out a font, uh, MLA does recommend that you pick a font like Times New Roman, that uh, there is a distinct difference between you know, when, you, when it is plain and when it is italicized. And you'll see in a moment why that is important. If you have trouble setting up your uh, MLA document formatting, uh, I'll show you in just a second where you can go to get uh, a template from the library's website so that you can use that and it'll all be set up for you already. Let's talk a little bit about the first page of your report. Your first page should start with your name, followed by your instructor's name, the course name and number, and the date. On the next line, centered, should be the title of your report. So you can see here, uh, we have Billy Hoya, Professor Hopwood, uh, Library 3302, and uh, the 1st of April, 2019. Herding Cats, a study. Um, something that is important to mention Sometimes professors will, will modify this a bit. Uh, make sure you listen to your professor. If they want you to do uh, your first page a little differently, maybe they want you to put uh, you know, something else in there or uh, put a section number in there or something like that, uh, do what they ask you to do. All pages should include a running head that includes your last, surname, family name, however you want to say it, and the current page number. You can edit the header in Microsoft Word by double-clicking the header area. In the Design tab, you can insert a page number at the top of the page and then add your last name. When you're done editing, click Close Header and Footer to continue editing the rest of the document. If you're having trouble setting up your document, Check the citation help guide on the LSC North Harris Library website for a template. Uh, I don't have the link here, but I will have the link at the end of the presentation and we'll also have the link down in the comment section for this video so that you can click on it and it'll just take you to this website. So now let's talk a little bit about why we cite. So imagine for a second you're a DJ. So here we are, DJ Billy, that's me. Let's pretend that you make an album. So DJ Billy, Billy has made an album here. Um, maybe it's not, doesn't get a lot of playtime. I mean, it's a good album, but it doesn't get a lot of playtime. It doesn't make a whole lot of money, but your album's out there. Now let's imagine someone comes along and maybe uses a sample from your song, right? So we got DJ Hopwood over here. She, uh, she used a sample for my, my uh, record there uh, when she was making uh, her record there. She's like, ha, 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 I'm not going to give him credit. He, he, he. So she just used a sample for my record. Um, and let's say that that record goes on. It makes millions of dollars somewhere, right? And because she hasn't given me credit, I'm not going to see any of that money. I put work and time into making my record, but she has used a sample from my record and she's not giving me credit or money or anything for it. Now, if you were DJ Billy and someone used your song like DJ Hopwood did, how would that make you feel? Horrible, right? Um, 
you know, DJ Hopwood is getting all the credit for uh, something that you worked on and uh, you're not really getting any of that credit. And the other thing is too, if people would like to use that same sample, they don't know where they get it, uh, where you got it. So they don't, they don't know to go uh, to your record and to get that sample. But now let's imagine for a second that DJ Hopwood gives me credit for the, the sample that she uses in her record. So you can see here, hey guys, I got this sample from DJ Billy. Now, if other people want to use that same sample, they can find my record and they can actually use that sample in their records as well. And also, if I used anybody's sample in making my record, those people get credit too. And this is why we cite. By giving credit for quotes and information, we allow people to find those works and use them in their own publication. It allows people to investigate and verify facts and figures you're using to construct your work. You can see here we have a report originally written by Dr. Billy. And over here, Dr. Hopwood has written a report and somewhere in there she's used some sort of fact or figure or quote in her report. And you can see she's given a nice little citation there. And so we can find Dr. Billy's report and if we want to, we can use that research in our own report, or we can just use it to investigate those facts and figures that are coming from Dr. Billy and see if they are, we're able to verify them. Let's look at some different ways to cite quotes. The main pieces of information a reader will need to find the original source are the author of the quote and the page number the quote appears on in the original text. To set this information apart, we put it in parentheses. You can see here that we have two examples of quotes. The first example, this is the more standard way for you to include quotes in your report. You can see we start with a little introduction according to one recent study, and then we go into our direct quote. So according to one recent study, comma, open quotes, 20% of students won't read this sentence, close quotes, Immediately after the quote, we follow it with the citation. Open parentheses, Hopwood, the last name of the author, and then the page number, no comma in between, H52. Close parentheses, period. In the second example, the quote is actually in the middle of a sentence. So you will see here, we have a little introduction. According to one recent study, comma, quote, 20% of students won't read the sentence, close quote, open parentheses, the author's last name, Hopwood, the page number, 52, close parentheses, comma, and then the rest of the sentence, leading to a high rate of failure. I will warn you, some professors at Lone Star College do not like the second way of, quote, of including quotes in your report. Um, and those who do uh, allow you to quote this way they prefer that the citation is actually at the end of the sentence. Um, if your professor prefers either of these methods, they will tell you. So make sure you pay attention to your professor about how they would like you to cite these types of quotes. If the quote covers multiple pages. Put the page number that the quote starts at, hyphen, and then the page number that the quote ends on. This is very important. Even if you don't directly quote a work or author, it's important that you still cite where the information came from. So for example, this sentence here, 80% of students will read this sentence. This is just a rephrasing of that earlier quote, 20% of students won't read this sentence. So you can see here, even though it's not uh, exactly uh, Hopwood's work, uh, words from her article, uh, I'm still giving her credit by putting the citation here at the end. That way people can go back and they can still find where I'm getting this data from. If the author is already mentioned in the sentence, then for the citation, you can just put the page number. Uh, for example here, according to research conducted by Hopwood, comma, quote, 20% of students won't read the sentence, close quotes, 
you can see here parentheses, page 52, close parentheses, period. Since we already mentioned the author Hopwood earlier in the sentence, we don't have to put the author's name again in the citation. Some professors don't like this uh, style of quoting. Again, listen to your professors. Um, they'll tell you whether they like this or not. If a quote continues for more than four lines, set it off from the text as a block indention, half an inch. To do that, all you have to do in Microsoft Word, highlight the text that you want to make indented, right click on it, and in the paragraph selection, you should be able to set the indention to one inch. So let's take a second to look at some in-text citations and see if you can figure out how to make uh, the citations for these quotes. So you can see here, I give you uh, the author, Billy Poya, page numbers, page 18 through page 19. And you can see here, data from research found that, quote, chocolate ice cream was the best ice cream, end quote. Uh, so what goes in that parentheses there? So if you said Hoya 18-19, you're correct. Congratulations. So let's try one more. So again, I give you the author, Billy Hoya, page. Uh, we only have a single page here, page 21. Uh, let's look at this quote. A study conducted by Hoya found that, quote, pineapple ice cream is the worst ice cream ever, close quote. So what goes in that parentheses? So if you said 21, you're correct. Congratulations. Remember, since the author is already mentioned in the sort of lead up to the quote there, you don't have to mention the author again in the citation. Now let's talk about your Works Cited page. Just like every other page in your report, the Works Cited page needs a running head. So at the top, it'll have your last name, page number, the title of the section is Works Cited Centered. Each entry in the Works Cited page will start with a hanging indent. Um, to set up the hanging indention, just highlight the text that you want to apply it to, right click on it, select paragraph. Uh, in that next dialog box that comes up in the indention section off to the right, you'll see uh, a little section that says special uh, and in there you can select hanging indent and that'll automatically uh, do the hanging indention for you. Um, if you're having trouble with that, again, if you get to that template, we'll have a link down in the uh, comment section there to get you to it. Uh, if you go to that template, it'll have this all set up for you so you can just drop your, uh, your work cited, your, uh, your individual citations in there. Um, and finally, each entry in the Works Cited page should be alphabetized uh, by the author's last name. Now, sometimes you may find something, uh, you may not have an author for a work. So for example, if you look at this, this example Works Cited page that we have here, the very first um, uh, uh, entry there we have, we don't have an author for that. Uh, when that happens, just use uh, the title of the, the work. So you can see here, it just goes straight to the title and we just alphabetize that uh, in with the rest of the entries. So now let's talk a little bit about actually making those works cited entries. MLA relies heavily on the concept of containers, that an object like an article can be contained in multiple containers and that each container must be documented. So if you look at this example here, we have a, a database called CatScan. That database contains the Journal of Cat Behavior, and then the Journal of Cat Behavior uh, contains the article Herding Cats by Billy Hoya. And so each one of these is in a container. And so when we cite this article, Herding Cats by Billy Hoya, we actually need to document each one of these containers. And you can see here in this citation, 
the green section here, Billy Hoy Herding Cats, that's uh, the article. That's contained in uh, the Journal of Cat Behavior, so we cite that. And then the Journal of Cat Behavior is contained in the Cat Scan database, and so we cite that. These are just some of MLA's core elements for citation. Not every item will have every element, and MLA prescribes certain elements for certain containers. For example, articles must have author and title source. Databases must have title of container and location. Looking at our original example, for the article, we document the author and the title of source, or the article title. That article is contained in a journal. So we then document the journal. The journal is contained in a database. So we then document the database. So let's look at some examples of citing different works. Uh, the first one we have here are articles. For articles, you start with the author's last name, comma, author's first name, period, quote, title of the article, period, close quotes, title of the periodical, italicized, comma, volume number, comma, issue number, comma, publication date, comma, page number, period. If you're getting this from an electronic source, and most of you probably are, you continue with the title of the database, comma, and then the location, period. A few points. Uh, if you are missing a piece of information, so for example, you can't find the issue number, just leave that blank and go to the next uh, element. So you would just do volume number, comma, publication date, comma. We have an example here. Uh, this example, you can see Hopwood, comma, Megan, period, quote, why won't students read this sentence? Uh, something to point out here, um, if the, uh, in, in this example, we have a title that actually has a punctuation in it. So it's, you can go straight from that punctuation and close the quote. You don't have to put another period there. Um, so we have uh, the title here, close quotes. Uh, we have the journal that we are getting this article from. Library Science International, italicized, comma, volume 80, comma, uh, issue number four, comma, one April 2019. Uh, do be aware, uh, MLA uses, uh, they do their dates by day, month, year, comma, PP period, 52-53 uh, period. And then we have uh, our information for the database that we are getting this article from. CAT scan uh, database, comma, uh, and that database title again is italicized, comma, uh, www.catscan.org slash link slash uh, the, the document number there. Um, sometimes when you're citing articles, your professor is going to want you to use uh, something called the DOI number. Um, in most of the databases that you use, for example, um, Academic Search Complete, um, they'll either give you a permanent link, uh, you'll see on the side there where you can either uh, select that and just copy it and you can use that here, or uh, they will give you a permanent link, uh, a, a DOI number somewhere in the abstract for the article. Um, some professors prefer that you use the permanent link, some professors prefer that you use the DOI link. Um, again, your professors will tell you which ones they prefer. So make sure you pay attention to your professors uh, so that you will get that right. Some articles have more than one author. If your article has two authors, then list the first author, last name, comma, first name, comma, then put and, and then put the name of the second author, first name, last name. If your, if your article has more than uh, two authors, say maybe three or four, simply put the name of the first author, last name, comma, first name, comma, and then write et al with a period. Et al is just a fancy Latin word 
that means and also. You can see two examples that we have here. So the first one here, we have Hopwood, comma, Megan, comma, and that's the first author. Um, and then we have and, and then we list the second author, first name, last name. Billy Hoya, period. Uh, open quotes. Why won't students read this sentence? The title of the article, close quotes. Library International, uh, Library Science International, italicized, comma, volume number, issue number, page number, period, CAT scan, italicized, the name of the database we got it from, and then the link to the article in the database. In the second one here, you can see we have an example of what it looks like when you have an article that has more than two authors. So again, you just list that first author that's listed uh, in, in the, uh, on the article there. So we have Hopwood, comma, Megan, comma, et al, period. Why won't students read this sentence, close quotes, um, and then it goes on just like the first one there. Now let's look at citing books. If you have a hard copy book, print book, something you can actually hold in your hand, it's very easy to cite that book. All you need to do is use the author's last name, comma, first name, period, the title of the book italicized, period, publisher, comma, publication date, period. Most of the information can be found on the first page of the book. So when you open the book, before the title page, there's usually the little page, or sometimes on the back of the title page, there's all that information right there that tells you the publisher, publication date, all that good stuff. If you're getting the book from an electronic source, like a database or a website, then you actually need to document that database and website because it is the container for the book. To do that, just like the first one, last name, comma, first name of the author, period, title of the book, italicized, period, publisher, comma, publication date, period. Then you have to say where you got it from. So uh, in this case, we're assuming that you are getting this from uh, one of the library's uh, electronic book databases. So you would put the title of the database, comma, location, and that would be a link to that book. So now we have a few examples of some books that we've cited. Uh, the first one you can see here, this is a hard copy book. So this is a book I can actually hold in my hand. Uh, we have the author, Hoya, comma, Billy, period. We have the title of the book, all answer, the answer to all your problems, italicized, period. We have uh, the publisher, Lone Star College Press, comma, and then we have the publication date, 2019, period. The second example here, this is the same book, except it is from an electronic database. So you can see we're getting this book from the CAT scan database. And so we put the title of the database, italicized, comma, and then the link to the book in the database, period. If the website has several distinct units, like blog entries or articles, or you're only using a specific page from a website, you should only cite that specific unit. It'll look a lot like citing journals. So if you see this example right here, you start with the author's name, last name, comma, first name, period, quote, title of the article, entry, or page, period, end quote, title of the website, italicized, comma, publisher, comma, publication date, comma, location. And that's the, the link to that particular page, period. Sometimes it can be difficult citing websites. Uh, you may not be able to find an author. You may not be able to find a publisher. You may not be able to find a publication date. If you can't find one of these elements, just skip that element. Now, at the very minimum, you do need to at least have a title of the page. You need to have a title of the website, and you need to have the location, the URL, HTTP, whatever, to get back to that web page. Let's look at this example down here at the, at the bottom. We have, uh, a, in this example, we weren't able to find an author, so we're just gonna skip that author. We're gonna go straight to the title. Uh, quote, why black cats are better than calico cats, period, close quotes. 
um, Megan's awesome website of cats in italicize, period, Hotwood Publishing, comma, 8 February 1999, comma, and then the link to the website. Actually, to the specific page on the website. Now, uh, one thing, like uh, I said, we weren't able to find the author for this particular article, so you notice we just skipped it. Um, when we go to list this in our Works Cited page, we're just going to alphabetize it. Uh, we're going to use that Y, so we're going to use uh, the W there and uh, put that down there with uh, all the authors whose last name starts with W. If you're using several pages from a website or there's no distinct sections in the website, you can cite the entire website. You should avoid this though. The point of citation is to make it easy for your reader to find the quote or the information that you're using in your report. If you cite the entire website, then your reader will have to go through the entire website to find that quote or that bit of data that you're using. If you cite a specific page or a specific article or a specific section of the website, that makes it easier for your, for your reader to actually go there and find the information that you're using. But sometimes you can't avoid it, or sometimes you may just use the entire website. For cases like that, we cite websites like this. Start with the author's name, last name, comma, first name, period, title of the site, italicized, comma, publisher, comma, publication date, comma, location, period. We have an example here, Hopwood, comma, Megan, that's the author of the website, period, Megan's awesome website of cats, italicized, comma, Hopwood Publishing, comma, the date of publication, 8 February 1999, comma, and then the link to Megan's awesome cats.info. So now let's try constructing some citations. The first example we have here is from a book called Type and Typography. This is an actual hard copy book, so you can go to the library, you can pull it off the shelf, you can hold it in your hand. Uh, we have uh, some information here over uh, from the library catalog here uh, to the left. We've got the title, we've got the authors, we've got um, the publisher, we've got the publication date, um, all the things you need to construct a citation. So think for a second, um, how would you construct the entry for type and typography in your works cited page? And here is the citation for type and typography. This book has two authors. And so you see we have them listed here. The first author, we list last name, comma, first name, comma, and, and then we put the second author's name, uh, first name, last name, period. We have the type of, title of the book, type and typography, italicized, period. We have the publisher, comma, and then the date of publication. For most books, you're not gonna have an exact day. You'll just put the year uh, for publication. If you can't find something that specifically says the book was published on this day, look for a copyright date and use the latest copyright date that you can find. Let's look at another example. This is an article from Texas Mon Monthly Magazine called San Antonio at 300. You can see we're actually retrieving this article from the Academic Search Complete database. And you see here in the record for the article in Academic Search Complete, it has the author, source, and other information that you'll need to construct a citation. So go on and think about how you, can, you would construct a citation for this article. This is the citation for uh, the article, San Antonio at 300. So we have here, there's only one author, so we have the author there. Uh, last name, comma, first name, period. Quote, San Antonio at 300, period, close quotes. Texas Monthly, 
the, the title of the source, italicized comma, uh, the date of publication, we only had a month and a year, and that's okay, comma, uh, page numbers. We don't have uh, an issue or a volume number here. Um, again, if you can't find, you should, you should try to find those elements, but if you can't find those elements, it's okay to skip it. As long as you have enough information there for your reader to be able to find the source again. Um, so we don't have issue or uh, volume number, so we're skipping that. We're going to uh, publication date, comma, uh, the page numbers that the uh, article is on, period. Uh, remember, so this article is contained in Texas Monthly, and Texas Monthly is contained in Academic Search Complete. So then we have to document uh, the database that we are getting this article from. So we have the title of the database, italicized, comma, and then the link to uh, the database, uh, to the article in the database. I didn't put the whole title, uh, the whole link here because it's really, really long and it would have taken up the whole slide here. But if you were doing the citation, you would have to put the whole really long link there. And for our last citation, we have how Hannah Shaw the kitten lady rescues the most fragile felines. This is actually uh, a transcript from a radio show, Fresh Air, that's on NPR. So think a few minutes about how you might cite this in your Works Cited page. And here is the citation for that article. So we start with the author, Gross Commentary, period. You can see uh, Terry Gross is uh, listed. She's actually the host of the show, but she's listed right up top there. So we have her here, last name, comma, first name, period. Quote, uh, the title of the piece, period, in quotes, NPR, that is the name of the website. You can see it right up top there, comma. We have the name of the publisher, National Public Radio. You could use NPR. Um, I think uh, for, for their name, they actually use it interchangeably. Uh, but I went on and spelled out NPR, uh, National Public Radio, just to make it clear, comma. We have the uh, data publication that's right up top there comma, and then that long link to this particular page on the website. And that was the last of your problems. Are you feeling better about MLA? Well, good. But if you still need some help, here's some links to some, to some different websites that might help you out a little bit. Uh, you remember earlier in presentation, I mentioned we had a template and some other resources to help you out uh, when citing MLA. Um, you can access those from this first website here, um, the LSC North Harris Library Citation Help page. So if you go to that link right there, that'll take you to um, our Citation Help page where you can get templates for MLA. Um, and we have some examples up there for uh, helping you cite different uh, types of media, books, interviews, things like that. You can also go there. Uh, we also have help there, not just for MLA, but for APA and Chicago um, style citations. So if you find yourself in another class and your professor is saying that they want you to cite in APA or Chicago, you can go to the same website there. And we also have templates for, for those uh, citation styles and examples for those citation styles as well. The second one here is the MLA Style Center, style.mla.org. This is a really great website. If you have a really unusual source that you're trying to cite, like the scratch, uh, this rock, I'm trying to cite this rock, there was something written on this rock, or you know, you have, how would you cite a is something written on an antique vase or something like that, right? This has all sorts, you can go in there, they have an FAQ 
They also have, you can kind of stump the, the, the pros there. You can ask them questions. You know, I've got this thing. How do I cite this thing that nobody's ever tried to cite before? It's a really great resource. Check that out. Uh, and finally, there's Purdue Owl. This website, you know, I've been using it. Um, I used it 20 years ago when I was a freshman in uh, undergrad. And it's a helpful website. In the last few years, they have started including some commercial stuff on it. So you do have to watch out. Don't click any of the ads or anything. But if you go to the, the style section for MLA, and they also have one for APA, it is really good. And they do have some good examples on there as well. And if you're still just having a whole, whole lot of trouble, maybe you just want to show someone your citation and uh, have them look over it or have them look over your works cited page, or you're still a little bit confused. Maybe your professor is saying, hey, you're actually plagiarizing this thing. You need to cite this better or something like that. Think about contacting us using the virtual reference service. You can go here, uh, nhresearch.lonestar.edu slash virtual reference. And we have a whole different bunch of ways that you can contact us. We have a chat reference service where you can go in. It's just like being on Instant Messenger or um, something like that. You just you know type with us, communicate with us, uh, almost like te text messaging on your phone. Uh, you can send us an email. We have our uh, email address in there. And then you can also schedule a virtual reference uh, appointment. And so that's where we have this uh, special software where uh, you can download it on your computer and then we actually, it's almost like uh, FaceTiming or Skype where uh, we can share out our desktop or you can share your desktop with us so we can see your work cited page or we can show you how to access a database or something like that. And you don't have to, you know, it's not just for MLA. If you're having trouble with APA or Chicago or one of those other styles, Give us a shout or even if you're having trouble maybe uh, doing some research on a library database or having trouble accessing a library database um, let us know through one of our channels there on virtual reference all right ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this presentation on uh, mla uh, citation and uh, style guides in general hopefully you found this uh, useful um, remember, if you need help, reach out to us, let us know.